I'd like to talk about a few things. Um, one thing that's been coming up, it's just a natural part of the unfolding of this process of disidentifying from the ego, and that's, that's fear. Um, and quite a few people have mentioned fear. And I, I want to talk a little bit about the larger picture of what we're doing here and how the dualistic mind is operating. Because um, it, it can be helpful to see how fear is just part of a larger pattern, actually. Um, you know, everything in duality in our, in our matrix world is, um, you know, it's polarized. You know, so we're, there's, you know, labeling one thing good, then another thing becomes bad. You know, so with um, fear, it's the same thing. Uh, there's there's a, a polarization that happens in the mind, and it's it's actually the same craving and aversion process that we've been talking about. Um, this this going after pleasure and avoiding pain, the pleasure principle. So so fear um, is just aversion, basically. So so the counterpart to fear, there there's two things that are going on in the mind. Um, the, the counterpart to fear is hope, actually. So um, hope is wanting something to happen in the future, you know, or, or sometimes the mind thinks something should happen in the future. It's just this pr projection into the future. It's this thinking process. So hope and, and um, and then fear is, is not wanting something to happen in the future. Or, or there's, an, there's an unknown, something scary might happen in the future. Um, so so the, both of these things go together. They're, they're two sides of one coin. And um, so when we abandon the mind, that conditioned mind, when we, when we stop believing those thoughts, then we abandon both hope and fear. And we have to, to, to come into the present moment. We, we have to abandon both hope and fear. There's um, that, that sign um, in Dante's Inferno, abandon all hope, ye who enter here. And uh, I, I love that, you know? It's like you, if you think of the ego as hell, you know, if you if you want to go through hell, you come out of hell. You know, out of hell into paradise. You know, abandon all hope. It's actually brilliant. And I went to one uh, uh, meditation center, and and he, uh, uh, it's the uh, monastic academy. He had uh, a sign, and it said, "Abandon all hope, ye who enter here." Over the zendo which is awesome, yeah. Yeah, so um, I have, um, you know, so what one um, uh, really amazing teacher, uh, Joseph Campbell, um, he, he talked about the, uh, the hero's journey. And, um, you know, in our, our world, a lot of our sort of um, paradigms or analogies or it's all, you know, if you look on Netflix and movies and what's in the collective unconscious, it's still, a lot of it is like about good conquering evil. You know, it's, it's one, one thing is good, the other is bad. Um, but the, the archetypal journey or this, this hero's journey that uh, Joseph Campbell talked about is, is much more sophisticated. It's not just black and white, um, good and evil. Um, you know, there's a there's a an evolution and an alchemy that happens in the hero's journey, and um, so he he sums it up really nicely in one of his books. I've got a, a quote here. You know, often we we go when we we start to do this work, we think you know I'm going to conquer my demons. I'm going to you know look in the unconscious and and um, conquer whatever evil thing is there and and um, uh, 
it's not that. And this, this, um, this quote is perfect. So he, he says, on our hero's journey, where we had thought to find an abomination, we shall find God. And where we had thought to slay another, we shall slay ourselves. And where, where we had thought to travel outward, we shall come to the center of our own existence. So I really love that framing, you know, and it's, we, we see it in some of the, some of the more sophisticated um, uh, movies, you know, like Star Wars actually is um, great, you know, when, when Luke goes into the, the cave in the first Star Wars and, and he comes face to face with himself. You know, he, 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 uh, there's the Darth Vader mask and he takes it off and, and he sees himself. You know, it's his, his, his arch enemy, but it's, it's actually himself that he has to conquer. Yeah. So these, these parts of us that, um, you know, the, the unconscious, you know, many of the um, traditions have sort of demonized the unconscious. You know, the unconscious is often represented by a serpent. Um, you know, the serpent, you know, in, in uh, Christianity, serpents are bad, you know, it's the devil. And, um, but in, in the, you know, its archetypal form, the serpent is actually wisdom. Um, so we don't want to slay that serpent. You know, we, we, we want to integrate it. Um, you know, there, there's a, a lot of contradictions in Christianity, but they're, they're, the, the truth is um, often encrypted. And there's a part in the Bible, um, uh, there's a, a quote, it goes something like, um, you know, just as, as Moses raised the serpent in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. And so like raising the serpent, you know, it's not, it's not killing the serpent, but it's, it's actually, um, making those unconscious forces conscious, yeah, integrating. Yeah, so, the, so the devil, the serpent, is, is um, you know, the, um, even, even Lucifer, even the, um, the story of Lucifer, he was, he was an angel. He just fell, you know, he just became um, egoic, you could say. You know, he got, got taken. He didn't want to be bossed around by God anymore. You know, so you know, so we, 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 we see, we come to see these um, things that are in the unconscious, and really, that's all we have to do. We just sort of affirm them. We allow them to be as they are. The more, the more you push them down, you know, the more. It, it's, it's like um, Carl Jung said, what you resist persists. Um, you know, so you, you go to battle with yourself, there's no end to that battle. You'll be battling yourself forever, you know, because it's, it's part of you. And that, that self-structure, um, you know, it's conceptualized many different ways. Um, Plato actually had a really brilliant way of, of talking about the self. Um, he used this uh, chariot analogy. So in, in his analogy, um, the, this chariot was, the chariot is you, like the chariot is the whole being, um, you know, all the levels of self. And um, it's being pulled by a black horse and a white horse. And so, um, in Greek, the, um, there's a word thumos. So the white horse is thumos, which is the, the white horse wants to go up. It wants to raise you up. It wants to go towards all the things that sort of elevate the soul. So it wants to go towards um, knowledge and wisdom and all the things that um, the higher pursuits, you know, music, poetry, um, it wants to uh, evolve, you know, out, and the, the black horse is eros. The, the black horse is the, um, you know, the pleasures of, of the body, of the, 
of the material realm. You know, so, so your chariot is being pulled by these two horses. So, so it, you, you want these horses to be in balance. You know, and, and if they're in balance, then they'll, they'll go in the direction that they're supposed to go. But if one is out of balance, one's going up, um, then you've got a problem. Your, your chariot's going to, you know, you can go too far in the direction of the white horse. You know, if all you're concerned about is spirituality and, and um, you completely neglect the body, then you, you'll go off track. You know, and if you go too much into eros, into pleasure, um, then you go off track as well. So you want a balance between the two. And, and the one in, in the chariot is the, um, you know, the one who is aware, you know, the one who is um, aware of these other two horses. Yeah, so I, I like that analogy. Then, you know, it's not about demonizing any aspect of life. It's just about finding the right balance with all of it. So we don't want to kill off any horses. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it it um, it's interesting. Like when we really go into these dualities, these um, polarities of of you know light and dark, good and bad, and. To me, the way, you know, the, the way to find that balance is the beginner's mind, you know, the not knowing mind. Keeping, and like with the, the ancient Greece analogy, um, Socrates was, was famous for saying, I only know that I don't know. You know. So, you know, the way through life is not labeling, you know, not having these preferences or judgments of one thing over another, because the, the truth is we, we don't know what's good or bad. There's a, um, in the, the Vipassana tradition, S.N. Goenka tells this story about um, uh, a person, uh, it's to um, illustrate this exact point where we, we really don't know what's good or bad. So in this story, um, you know, there's a, a town where the people in this town, they're, they're very judgmental in this town. They're always judging things as good or bad. And, and um, you know, everything is a blessing or a curse. And, and they're, they're very quick to judge things. Um, but this, the, the guy in the story is, um, he's sort of a good meditator. He's, he's a good, um, you know, someone who, who has a, a beginner's mind or a don't know mind. You know, so, so one day he, um, he, he has a horse and the horse runs away. And, um, you know, so everybody in the town is like, oh, that's so terrible. Your horse ran away. You know, you're, you're so unlucky. You're so, yeah, you know, you must be cursed or something. Um, and and he, he just said, well, I don't know. And so the next day, the horse comes back, and, and a wild horse comes with it. And, and so he's got two horses. And, and, uh, and they're like, oh, you're so lucky. Like, you must, the gods must be smiling on you. You're so lucky. You know, you've got this beautiful wild horse. And then, so, so his son goes to, to break in the horse, you know, to, to tra train it. And the horse kicks him in the leg. And then, then it flips again, and they're like, oh, the, the horse must be cursed. It's terrible, <clears throat> evil horse. You know, it's shattered your, your son's leg. You can't walk. And, and, and then the next day, the, the conscription officer comes from the army, and he was, he was going to sign the son up for the army, but he, he, he can't because his, his leg is broken. So, so then it's a blessing again. And, and the story just goes on and on and on. So... You know, it's a, it's a great example of how, you know, the, really the only wisdom is a don't know mind. You know, there's, there's this poetry that's unfolding in life and we don't really know. You know, we can look back and we see the poetry, but, but in the moment, 
um, the only real wisdom is a don't know mind. There, there's been a few, ex well, quite a few examples in my own life of that. You know, there was a, a period where I was very sick, and you know, I was was living deep in the matrix, and uh, my I, I didn't know how to take care of my avatar very well. So my my body got sick, and and um, at the time it seemed hellish. You know, it seemed like a bad thing. But at the time, I didn't know that life or something was pushing me onto a different path. And I came to see that sickness eventually as a gift, as something that was taking me deeper into my inner world and into meditation and, and onto a completely different path. So, so we never know, you know what's coming. <laughs> 